We are out for a morning walk. I love the fact that you guys get to see our morning walks like through every season. <laughs> Fall is one of my favorite. Winter is wonderful. We've gotten a lot of snow this year. I only really like snow. It's like it has the most snow. See this? That pine bridge looks like it has the most snow, so I'm going to throw it to that. Okay, go ahead. <laughs> Not me. The tree. Okay. What are you doing? Come on, child. All right. <laughs> Do y'all feel how cold it is? Because it's cold. Come here. Come here. I'm going to eat some. This snow is so edible. light, fluffy, and edible. It's edible. Oh. Yes. Oh. <sighs> What did you say, Savannah? I gotta go back up silent, Mama. <laughs> Savannah, you're eating the snow. It's a hot Oh, cool. Oh, cool. Oh, cool. It looks like a whole winter wonderland. They said it looks like Narnia, you guys. How can I break this up to start school today? <laughs> I won't. Oh, great. I feel like we can film a whole little mini movie out here. <laughs> this is what the office garage. I'm coming back out here. I'm going to put I'm two gonna come back out here. Currently the fight. We are the Falcon family. Brian, Serena, Cameron, Kendall, and Savannah. We're a family of five driven by purpose and fueled by love. We decided to trade in the traditional school life for a life where every day is an adventure of faith and love. From a small photography business grew a love of memory keeping and filmmaking that turned into a full blown dream of becoming a family of filmmakers exploring the truth about education. So we're learning to document our adventures in homeschool, business, and life and tell stories of how we live and what we learn. back inside from our little adventure out in Narnia and now we're gonna put on a Narnia playlist so we can listen to in the background while we get started with a little bit of our calendar work this little lady has on my sweatshirt because she said it was way cold outside watch your headphones you guys aren't they so cute and this guy is on to another book today I think I'm gonna share with you guys our TBR stack for February. So this stack is a little bit higher because it includes some of January's books, but I'm gonna show you what we are going to be reading. Oh, friends. Okay, so it is another day. <laughs> it's another day, and um, I wanted to come back in and try my hand at doing like somewhat of a proper wrap-up slash TBR situation. Um, so I'm wanting to keep track of this every month and I know I'm going to stink at doing it at the beginning, but um, hopefully I'll get better and better. The kids are actually working through their schoolwork for the day, but in the future I would like to um, have them sit down and go through uh, some of the books with me so they can tell um, some of their thoughts and and things about the books that they read. But I figured I would go through our stacks and just kind of show you what we've been working through for January, February. It'll be good um, documentation for me. And then um, just a beginning chat about what we are reading lately. Um, so I'll start with Savannah's stack. We're gonna start with this one here. So Miss Vanna Girl is really growing into her own as a reader and um, we had too much fun going over to the library um, and letting her pick out books that she was interested in. So we've gotten to a point where um, it's much less you know suggested or required reading and more of like her trying to feel out what she really enjoys reading about and so I give her that freedom so this time around she actually picked the diary of an ice princess frost friends forever so she literally got through this in about 30 minutes or so and really enjoyed it um 
I took no interest in reading through this one with her, but what I do is um, give her tabs so that if there's things that she knows that we look for as far as like bad character traits or questionable actions and things like that, she, then she is to tab them so that we can go back through them together and talk about them. So that's kind of like very quickly how we do things when that is concerned. So she enjoyed this Diary of an Iced Princess. So this is a cute little book by Tia and Tamara. She is currently reading this right now. It's about identical twins, of course, and um, how they may be, they have like magical powers to see into the future. Their visions are getting stronger and their teachers su suspect that they have magical powers. And then they get into a space where maybe their visions and their magical powers might be a little bit dangerous. So, so far, so good. Um, Savannah is very into reading books with older characters. And so I have to balance that. Um, I have to tread very lightly because I don't want to ruin her um, reading life. But at the same time, I want to make sure that I'm feeding her, you know, what I would like to see her advance in. So, um, Ice Princess and Twin Tuition, The Double Dare is what's been on her list. Then we have Ivy and the Goblin. This is about a little girl named Ivy. She's super cute. And um, this book has dragons and pixies um, in a town called Broom Sweep. I have not read these books just yet, which brings me to this fact um not getting to the point where it was super super difficult for me to pre-read books ahead of time with the kids was a major roadblock that i had to press my way through and one of the ways in short that i've pressed my way through that is coming to terms with the idea that rereading is a really good thing and it's a really good tool that we use um in our homeschool life so a lot of times the kids will move forward and they will read things that i maybe haven't gotten a chance to really dive into um but that's okay i think that it's shown us um it's it's helped me to let go a little bit and know that i can circle back around to stories and um then they would make for more of a rich discussion because they would have already had that first exposure um, and that like heads up on comprehension. So what I do is when they read books, I add them to my to be read list, which means that once I get around to them, then we can open them up for a discussion and a little bit of a reread and things like that. So that's how I handle it. I look on places like Common Sense Media to uh, just kind of familiarize myself with the story and what it may have in it and then we go from there so she's read both of these books and I have not read them just yet but I do know that there is um there are dragons and pixies and that's all I need to know right now and then when we circle back around to them then I can really focus in on all of the character things and address any issues or questions and things like that so she made her way through this one and it's super cute it's so cute. Um, next up on her to be read list is Paddington and I'm very excited about this because I remember really enjoying these when I was little. So have you guys read the Paddington series? If so, how many have you read? So now we have the True Blue Scouts of Sugar Man. Swamp Kendall just finished reading this one and he seemed to thoroughly enjoy it. I have this one on audiobook so this should be an easy one for me to catch up and try to identify anything that I want to have conversation with him about but I do remember several times of him just like chuckling and having a good time while reading this book so this is about two raccoon brothers bingo and jemai and they are new recruits of the sugar man swamp scouts they get served the sugar man uh, which is a massive creature that rules over the swamp and loves a sugar cane but then a 12 year old boy named chad he knows a lot about the swamp and he'll do anything to protect it so there's trouble that comes for the swamp and chap and the scouts are on this mission to try to save the swamp so 
Finding Wanderers. It is the story, well, it fuses together three stories of um, three women in science. When he first picked this one up, he was a little bit bored. But um, my kids are really good at pressing through and trying to give it their best shot, and now he's been enjoying it. I can tell that he doesn't love it like a ton, a ton, um, because he's making his way through it a lot more slowly. Um, but that's okay. Uh, I give them space to have a different pace for something that maybe isn't like their absolute favorite thing to read. I don't think anything is wrong with that. I don't know if this will be considered written in prose or verse. I think it's more prose. I don't know. I'll figure it out. But he is making his way through and I love that about him. So the next one up on his list is this one here. He's been trying to avoid it because he says that the illustration is a little bit creepy, which I don't disagree. Where is the lie? <laughs> okay. Um, but this is The Toothpaste Millionaire. I've heard nothing but really good things about it. And we need more stories that have like young entrepreneurs or young kids with ideas and things like that. Um, so Kendall really one of his top all-time favorite books is The Boy Who Harnessed the Wind um, and that is a lot of a lot of the reason why is because it is about this boy who has an idea and makes this thing happen um, so we he loves those kinds of stories so I really think that he's gonna love this one so I like strongly suggested that he added this next up on his list and he happily said okay mama <laughs> so he's gonna be reading this one next after that i was going to strike up some suggestions for him but something i just felt in my heart um kendall is a ginormous reader of the bible um he loves uh, reading his action bible um we got it years ago for him his first action bible is all like tattered and torn and well loved on and we got him a new one it was so cute because the other day i um went to go and check on him at night and realized he was reading his old bible even though i had gotten a new one and he was like oh but i love this one i love all the different pages and stuff like that so as i was trying to select some books that were next up on his list to be read i just felt like um i would maybe ask him if he'd be interested in reading the bible from cover to cover and letting that be like his quiet reading time. I had seen a few more in this series um, of two more devotional type of books that go along with this graphic novel type of style that has more prompts and more questions that he could follow along with his journal and like answer the questions and just kind of really like liven up and deepen his study. So I went to him and asked him if he would be interested in reading this cover to cover for his reading time. And he was really excited about that. He said he actually um, had suggested that to Cameron and Cameron was like, I don't think she's gonna let you do that he don't know me <laughs> anyway so this is going to be next up on his list and i think he's excited about it i think it's going to be a really really good thing so we have moved on to cameron's stack <laughs> so this is what cameron has read in january february and i'll just kind of try to quickly run through it i don't think they're going to be in order which he's not going to love but he's going to have to be in the video if he wants me to get it right next time around <laughs> so i think the first one in january he finished was we dream of space um this is by aaron entrada kelly he happens to really like her as an author this book um was a total cover buy <laughs> for me and anything about space is always great because i just think there are so many connections we can make i think this is part historical fiction because it follows the challenger launch i'm pretty sure um i had read the reviews about this one and it has a family dynamic that's pretty conflicting i read a lot of reviews that were not a fan of this book because of that i think you have to be very careful now that i'm going to start sharing more and more about what we're reading i think it's important to note that reading is very personal it has everything to do with who you are, what type of personality you have, the experiences that you have had in life. Um, I knew that the family dynamic in this book was very complex, um, but I also knew that my kids grow up in a home that's very loving and very encouraging and does not have a lot of the things that are happening in this book. And I think this is a great um, window into 
um, the family life of other kids that could quite possibly be like this. I think that this is necessary for my kids um, to be able to develop empathy when in real life we don't, we're not really connected or so we don't think to um, other people that have this type of family life. And I think that it's important for my kids to be exposed in a certain way to those things in order to grow that capacity for empathy towards other people's circumstances and situations and begin to understand that it's not just a simple um, good person, bad person, good family, bad family. It's a lot more complex and complicated than that. And so I think that he enjoyed reading this book. Um, I saw him with a lot of faces that he was making, like he just couldn't believe that um, they were saying certain things or doing certain things or why are they arguing so much um, or what is happening. Um, and that I think is really important um, as we start to develop in our reading life. So I will try to figure out how I can get a bit more of their thoughts and feelings on the books that they're reading. The kids rate their books and we keep up with them but I'm trying to find a more tangible way to do that in order to share. Oh and I forgot to say okay so it follows siblings Cash, Fitch, and Bird. They live in the same house but they exist in their own orbits. Dreaming of hope, dreaming of belonging, dreaming of friendship, dreaming of family, dreaming of space. So it's just a complex story about these three um, kids. I think that the boys are twins. I'm not sure. Cameron would know better. <laughs> Again, I don't know if these were completely in order, but Echo now. And he was a bit surprised when he actually saw how thick it was. So he did not pick it up right away. Um, but he loved this book. This was a five star for him. I started reading it with him. I had the audio book and I was planning on reading this along with him. And I got maybe like a few chapters in. And next thing you know, he had finished the book. Like I said, he's a super fast reader. But this is, I think this would be considered historical fiction-ish too. So this follows three, well, it's kind of three separate stories um, of three different kids that are kind of connected by this harmonica. And I heard that the audiobook was wonderful because, and which I really started to enjoy all three chapters that I've made my way through. Um, I liked the magical elements in this story, which is not typically something that Cameron goes for. Um, so I was really surprised to see him pick it up and stick through it. Well, he normally sticks through in his books but I was wondering what he was going to think about it with the magical elements. He's a big fan of historical fiction but not so much the magical elements. Um, he doesn't mind those stories but he typically prefers for them to be in read aloud format so like if we select those things as a read aloud but his personal reading he doesn't typically like choose those things but he loved this one and um, I really I'm looking forward to rereading it, or I guess I wouldn't be rereading it. I'm looking forward to reading it so I can open up that dialogue and have conversation with him um, about the book so that he can tell me all the things. I don't try to get that. I, I try to ask them how they're experiencing the story while they're reading, um, but I don't get into too much details about like a complete retelling because I don't want to ruin the experience and right now the experience is everything um, to us when it comes to our reading life. So I ask a little bit of things here and there but I think I'll really get into it once I'm able to read through the book myself and then open up conversation and um, as I am experiencing the book chapter by chapter then he'll be able to come in and say oh yeah like wait till the next chapter or wait till the next thing happens so i'm looking forward to that um but he enjoyed this one and i'm pretty sure it was a five star uh this is one he was not going to pick up on his own and i strongly suggested it and he ended up five starring it so he loved this one um this is as brave as you by jason reynolds this was his first real experience i think with reading a black author actually which is which I loved because um I always and I loved it not for the reason that you're thinking more so for the reason that I love to see how they experience different writers and um what they note from experiencing different writers and being exposed to different stories I love to see what they take note of and not so much what I feed or push 
on them. Um, so this story is about a, I think he is 11. Cameron says they're always 11 or 12. <laughs> it's about a boy named Jeannie and he is heading to his grandparents' house with his brother to Virginia to experience the not so great outdoors where they're in for some big surprises. Um, so there's things that he learns about the oddities that his grand father has and how they're starting to make sense through the story. I think that he really was able to experience writing that was different than he's used to in many of his historical fiction books. They had a lot of vernacular slang and ways of saying things that he was observing um, in the writing and he enjoyed that. He often enjoys if there is an accent involved. Stories and old London. He pays attention to their verbiage and what they call things. This was a five star uh, for him. Okay, I'm going to try to make these wrap ups a little shorter, but it's hard. <laughs> okay, so next up, I wanted him to try this one out. Super short. This is by Jacqueline Woodson, and this is Before the Ever After. I really wanted him to try this because this would be his first. Is this his first? I'm not sure. Maybe I need to go back and check. But this is. I think it's his first story written in verse. I get kind of confused with verse and prose sometimes. I'm not exactly sure. So if you guys know a good way to tell the difference, I'd love to hear it. But um, I wanted to see how he would follow this book um, and if he would enjoy it. There's another one he started that was Inside Out and Back Again that he did not finish just yet um, because we didn't have the physical copy. But that one was also written in verse and that was his first exposure to that type of writing. Um, so he didn't finish that one just yet but he did finish this one. And this is a story about a boy, CJ, and his father is a famous football player but this goes through the highs and lows of what that really means his father is not well and it's because of the toll that football has taken on them and it just kind of goes through the complexities of that situation i don't know what star rating he gave this so i'll have to check in with him to see what he thought next up i also noticed too that he generally enjoys stories with girl protagonists. He likes to see more boy protagonists, but he does really enjoy girl protagonists. I think that's because it gives him a window into a girl's mind and things like that. So that's so cute to observe right now. Oh wait, not this one yet. I think he read this one first. So next up was The Science of Breakable Things. So this is about, of course, an 11 or 12 year old again. Question, how do you grow a miracle? So we're uh, following Natalie in this book and her mother is a botanist, but she's suffering from depression. Um, so really this is a story from what I gather about her trying to take a scientific approach to somehow fixing what her issues are, the, the experiences that she's, the challenges that she's having in her family life with her mother and her mother's um, depression. And she goes through this journey of trying to um, win at a science fair in order to acquire something that she feels like will make, will fix her mom's problems, will make her mom happy. I'm pretty sure that Cameron liked this one too. I think this was probably like a four star coming from different backgrounds, different nationalities. Um, I always love when there is a, um, a, a, a different profession involved like her mother is a botanist um, a football player yeah and the different jobs they have and things like that anyway that's a whole nother video next up is the house that Lou built this was a five star for him for sure so this one was a really quick read for him but in this case we are following I love saying we are following. This is about a large Filipino family. So we're following Lou and she is attempting to build her dream home. She lost her father and she's basically going through this motion of trying to build this house that was a dream um, that she and her father had. She just doesn't want to give up on her dream and her friends and family won't let her give up either. So this is another own voices. The house that Lou built was another five star for him. And then we have more to the story. He's actually currently reading this right now and we're still working on what he is going to be picking up next. But this book, this story is about 
Jamila and Jamila wants to be an award-winning journalist like her mother. See, there's another profession thrown in there that I love. This has a, a school newspaper in it. The chief keeps shooting down her article ideas when she's assigned to write about the new boy in school who everyone is buzzing about because of his British accent. Jamila wonders how she'll make his story gripping enough to enter into a national media contest. So I love this one because again, we're following a journalist and you guys know that that is a major deal. The idea of journalism and communication, being able to take research and formulate ideas in a way that you can share with other people is always a win. So I'm always trying to find books, movies, TV shows that help us to push across that idea that journalism for us is a major part of our homeschool and life. So he is currently reading this one. I'll keep you posted on how this one goes. All right, this is getting long, isn't it? I'm so sorry. Okay, so next up, I'll go through Brian's reads. And the first one is The Extraordinary Colors of Auden Dare. So this is actually his read aloud. We have been working on this one for a very long time. Sometimes read alouds just take a long time because we have other things going on. That's not a problem for us. Um, but I do know that they're close uh, to the ends of this one. I don't exactly know completely what's going on. Sometimes I sit in on their read alouds, but sometimes I don't. So um, I do know that Auden Dare, um, he has an unusual perspective. He cannot see color. I do also know that the kids don't necessarily like him as a protagonist, although Brian is trying to do a good job at reading and pointing out places where they should be a bit more empathetic towards him. I think that overall they just don't love him as a protagonist. But um, his life is about to get more difficult. It hardly rains anymore anywhere and Auden's father is away fighting in the water wars. So there's a war in this um, story but it specifically has to do with a lack of water. There's a robot. We have a little bit of world building here and so I love that. And yeah so this is their first little introduction to dystopian type of writing so I'll keep you posted on their full thoughts. I don't know if they're going to be good complete thoughts because it's taken them so long to get through this story. I think it's kind of harder to you know create that connection when it takes you longer to work your way through a story but we'll see how it goes. Next up for Brian he has been reading this A Promised Land by Barack Obama he is more than halfway through and um, I kind of sort of feel like I'm reading it too because Brian's the type of reader that likes to give you the play-by-play -play, which I love but I don't but I've learned to love because I'm basically reading this too <laughs> we also have this one on audiobook which he is able to kind of work his way through the more difficult parts because he gets really in-depth and detailed in here. Um, I love his voice. That's not a surprise. Love his voice. Love his writing. But it is very detailed. So there are certain parts that's a little bit more difficult to work your way through. So, but I'm so proud of him. He's become quite the reader. <laughs> I love knowing that there's something that started as an idea in my head that I was able to translate to the kids that then, you know, trickles down and, or no, trickles up and um, translates well to Brian. So Brian's become like quite the reader lately. As a matter of fact, they're all pretty much reading a lot more than I am. And I always say that, but maybe I shouldn't say that anymore because technically I'm having trouble getting through my personal reads but i'm still very much so reading a lot of what they're reading with them um so he's working his way through barack obama's a promised land and then next up we have counterfeit gods so this is by timothy keller and this is about the empty promises basically of counterfeit gods and how we get to the place where um we can idolize certain things in our lives and how it sneaks up on you how it manifests brian loved this book i'm pretty sure he would consider it five star ish and i kind of sort of feel like i read this one too at least the, the first half now we've moved on to my stack i'm gonna end with mine so first up i have our read aloud so brian has a read aloud i have a read aloud this one is green glass house so in green glass house we follow um milo and milo is adopted and lives in a, a smuggler's inn. Um, it is winter break for them and he thinks he's gonna get this nice mellow winter break when people start showing up at the green glass house and it's disrupting his idea of what a wonderful winter break is gonna be but it opens up this whole 
mystery and when he uh, couples up with a girl that he meets and they go along on this adventure to um, uncover uh, the mystery of Green Glass House. So we've only made our way through about maybe five or six chapters. So far, so good. It's harder for me to get into books in the first few chapters. The kids do a lot better job at that, so I just keep reading. And then by the time I get halfway through and towards the end, I'm fully invested. So keep you posted on how this one goes. So next up, I have two other reads that are pre-reads um, for things that I'm kind of sort of putting on their shelves so I can get a feel for them and figure out um, how I wanna approach them. This one is by Renee Watson ways to make sunshine okay so i'm halfway through this book i should have been done but i have other things to do okay <laughs> but um move over ramona quimby portland has another neighbor you have yet to meet this protagonist is so cute as a black girl have stories like these when i was younger and i really didn't know what i was missing and it's really been delightful just to kind of point out some of the things that you identify with and um things that like you love to see and I don't know, it's just really exciting to know that more kids, as books become more and more diverse and um, stories are being told more and more by different diverse um, perspectives uh, that little kids more little kids will be able to see themselves inside of stories and this isn't just about race this is about um, if you have a mom who's a botanist if uh, you have a, a dad who's in the army or this is about a diversity of story and different perspectives and different religions and different races um, where kids can kind of just identify and say hey I have that or hey I know that I can't believe that's in a story so far I have been tabbing for the writing for the lessons that I love for the character things I love for the things I love to see the things I identify as this is us this is what we do um, so I'm enjoying this one so far um, and I'm excited to put it on their shelves as a quick read um, another thing I try really hard not to do I talk about this on our patreon about one of the biggest uh, things in laying down a good foundation for having a family where everybody is just avid readers is identifying what type of stories and what kind of books do you like to read I think a lot of that is a mistake that we make early on um, because we tend to we tend to have labeled books um, and stuff them in categories that are based on things that really don't make too much sense like boy books and girl books and group them by age and reading level and I think that that is a mistake I think it's a mistake because it, it, it produces a barrier to which you're gonna have a hard time really finding your sweet spot for what type of stories you like. Um, you can be 18 and still reading tons and tons of picture books. Um, you can be five and reading stories that are much older if you have a helper that can help you decipher through and omit things that maybe you're not gonna understand or you're not ready for yet. Um, to me, it's about focusing on the story. Um, and I think that that is what I've kind of, the journey that I've been going through over the last few years um, with trying to raise a family of readers is really putting that focus back on the story and rethinking these labels and these levels and these categories and all of that so this is not one of those things that I would look at and say hey this is a book for my seven-year-old you know or this is a book for my little girl or this is a book for my little black girl like I think that those are things that we need to stop stuffing them in categories for and start um, and start seeing the stories differently redefining what our purpose is in exposing kids to certain stories so I wouldn't put this just on Savannah's shelf I would put this on all the kids shelves so that they could get insight into the story from this girl who happens to be younger who happens to be black who happens to have grown up in a church from her perspective so that I think that's really important to kind of bust loose from uh, those labels and those boxes that say that certain stories belong um, in certain spaces with certain kids so anyway that was my long 
description of uh, ways to make sunshine. I'm excited to make my way through it and tell you what I think about it finally. This is about, it's a story about, I don't, I don't give great synapses because I don't like to know too much going into stories. So that's what you're gonna get here, <laughs> okay. Um, so this is about Wes Henderson and he is in the sixth grade and uh, he basically lives in a neighborhood that is um, dealing with a lot of gentrification. Following him and his family and trying to advocate for the changes that are happening in their neighborhood um, is something that clearly at the beginning of the story he's not so interested in and wondering why do we do this and then I'm assuming that as we move further into the story he gets more involved and starts to understand and gather the purpose for doing what they're doing now I'm going to my two personal reads and I don't want to hear it okay <laughs> hear anybody talk about how I've been trying to read this book for a year it's fine don't even worry about it okay so this was my book that fit the category of an adult fiction and y'all I am more of a picture book chapter book middle grade girl and so trying to jump into adult is just not something I've never done before I can't even say that I'm trying to jump back into it because I never really read adult fiction before I was always a middle grade girl or a non-fiction girl but not necessarily adult fiction so that's why this has taken me I enjoy I'm enjoying the story there's some complex parts that I'll explain why maybe I'm not moving through it as quickly but um I'm loving the writing it's it's very different in it. it's very it, it makes me think I'll just talk all about it as I may be included in a reading vlog where I'm finishing this book up um but the Water Dancer is on my list, on my book list currently. Still, it's fine. Don't worry about it. <laughs> the last book that I have on my TBR is this one, Bill Nye's Everything All at Once. I'm very excited about making my way through this book. I also have it on audiobook. Everything All at Once is a lifestyle, a philosophy, and an approach to change that has served Bill Nye well since he was a young boy. From his time as a young physics student to his years working as a professional engineer, he developed a worldview that there was no problem that could not be solved with his unique blend of curiosity, which I'm all for because y'all know that our whole entire homeschool and life is built around um, preserving that curiosity because I think that that's what kind of leads us and pushes us through a lot of the challenges. And so I'm really interested um, to get in a peek into his mind on whatever method he's produced for being able to process and handle lots of information. I think that minds like this scientists like this are going to be key for us in this day and age because that is what we really need to learn is how to process this ginormous influx of information that's happening like every moment so i'm very excited to make my way through this one when i read books like these i'm not necessarily trying to finish them in a, any given time i just want to make consistent progress with them so that is my goal okay we made it through I made it through the end of this January, February wrap up slash TBR slash whatever. I'll get better. <laughs> I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Thank you so much for following along. Remember that life is so very full of lessons and our goal as always is to live and to live. Bye. Bye. Don't, Don't forget, forget to subscribe. subscribe.